Hi everyone, it's Andrea and I'm here today with part two of my December book haul. Obviously now we're in 2017, so I've got a few things to wrap up before we get crack on with the new year. So a book haul is a good as way to start as any. So this is books I bought in the second half of the month and also books that I was given by my friend Sue or for Christmas by friends and family mostly family. So we'll start with the two books that Sue gave me and the first one is Blood and Bone by Valentina Giambanco. So obviously Sue is into her thrillers and so this is a thriller. So after two years in the Seattle Police Homicide Unit, Detective Alice Madison has finally found a piece she has never known before. When a local burglary escalates into a gruesome murder, Madison takes charge of the investigation. She finds herself tracking a killer who has haunted the city for years and whose brutality is the stuff of myth in high security prisons. As she delves deep into the case, Madison learns that the window of one of the victims, sorry, the widow, not the window, the widow of one of the victims being stalked, is the killer poised to strike again. As pressures mount, Madison will stop at nothing to save the next innocent victim, even if it means playing a killer's end game. So that one sounds quite good. And the second one she gave me this month was uh, The Twelfth Card by Jeffrey Deaver. Now I've read some of Jeffrey Deaver's before and I do enjoy them. And so this is Schoolgirl Genevieve Settle's research project into her slave ancestor Charles Singleton and Earth's more than just an interesting story. Suddenly, Geneva seems to be the target of a professional assassin, a man who will ruthlessly kill anyone in his way unless top criminalist Lincoln Rhymes can piece together the deadly puzzle. Trapped inside a paralysed body, Rhymes' brilliant mind is channeled through his partner, policewoman Amelia Sachs, as they work frantically to anticipate where the hitman will strike next and how to stop him. And Rhyme and Sachs soon realise the only way to stop the killer is to discover the secret Charles Singleton took to his grave over 140 years ago, a secret that threatens to destroy the future of human rights itself. So I've read um, Lincoln Rhyme stories before. I love Jeffrey Deaver. This sounds fantastic as it delves into some of America's uh, troubled history. So that should be really good. Um, now we'll move on to the books I bought myself. Now the first four books I got from my local doctor's surgery charity table, they were 25 pence each. So I picked up Peter James' Dead Man's Footsteps. Now as you all know, I love Peter James. I read as many of them as I can and I'm actually trying to collect them all. I don't mind whether they're hardback or paperback. I'm not fussy with Peter James. So this one is Amid the Tragic Unfolding Mayhem of the Morning of 9-11, failed Brighton businessman and ne'er-do-well Ronnie Wilson sees the chance of a lifetime to shed his debts, disappear and reinvent himself in another country. Six years later, the, the, the discovery of the skeletal remains of a woman's body in a storm drain in Brighton leads Detective Superintendent Roy Grace on an inquiry spanning the globe and into a desperate race against time to save the life of a woman being haunt, hunted down like an animal in the streets and alleys of Brighton. So that one sounds really good. I do like the Roy Grace stories. Got quite a few Peter James to read, so I'm gonna crack on hopefully and get one of those done soon. Um, the next one's another Peter James, and this is called the At is Atom Bomb Angel, and this is one of his early novels. Um, and this was originally published in 1982. Terrorists are threatening, threatening to sabotage Britain's nuclear power plants. One nuclear explosive smuggled inside a reactor would turn the entire core into a massive atom bomb and bring death and disease to millions of people for centuries to come. Sir Isaac Creote, chairman of the Atom Atomic Energy Authority and the man responsible for the running of all nuclear power stations in the UK disappears without a trace. Then MI5 intercepts mysterious film footage of Coit that apparently shows him defecting to Russian terrorists, but all is not as it seems. Has Coit in fact been kidnapped? And what is the mysterious Operation Angel? Max Flynn is briefed to find out who the terrorists are and which power stations they will sabotage in a race against time to stop Britain being engulfed in a nuclear nightmare. So this is one of the books that predates his um, Roy Gray series and it's not one of his spooky ones. So this is very early um, Peter James. So I am looking forward to getting into that. I read one of his earlier ones uh, in 2016, which was called Billionaire and I did enjoy it, but it, I did find the character very unsympathetic. Excuse me, I'm a little bit thirsty. The next one I've got is Home by Harlan Coburn. I'm a big Harlan Coburn fan. I watched his miniseries The Five in 2016. I've still got it saved on my hard drive to watch again because it was absolutely brilliant. So this one says, for 10 long years, two boys have been missing. Now you think you've seen one of them. 
he is a young man and he's in trouble. Do you approach him, ask him to come home with him, with you, and how can you be sure it's really him? Your thought, you thought your search for the truth was over. It's only just begun. So that sounds quite interesting. Um, I, I do like Harlan Coben's books. And the next one is called The Witness and it's by Simon Koenig. So, The Witness. When Jane Kinnear sees her lover being murdered, she finds herself in extreme danger. Taken to an anonymous police safe house, it soon becomes clear that her lover was an MI5 informant with an important information about an imminent terrorist attack. The detective. Dr. D.I. Ray Mason of Counterterrorism Command is a man with a controversial past, but his effectiveness in getting results means that he has now been given the task of presenting the attack from taking place. But can he be trusted? And does he more no, know more about the attack than he's letting on? The killer. In the safe house, Jane is trying to piece together a description of her lover's killer. But what she doesn't know is that the killer has already found out who she is and where she's hiding. And now he's coming for her. So, yeah, that one sounds quite good. A bit of a spy thriller, but, you know, with terrorism. Very apt. And then I bought two new, brand new editions. So two new books. Uh, uh, which I got from uh, my local Waterstones in Newport because I'm a big supporter of Waterstones, Newport and Cardiff. I go in there every time I'm there and most times I buy something. Not always. I went in one day and didn't buy anything. So uh, so the first book I bought was George R. R. Martin's A Feast for Crows, which is the next one in Song of Ice and Fire, fourth book. I still haven't read A Storm of Swords. I have got it. I've got it because it's in these mass market paperbacks. It's actually in two parts. Uh, but I haven't started them yet. It's one of the things I want to do this early 2017 is get on with it because I am enjoying these. So um, basically this one is the Lannisters are in power on the Iron Throne. The war in the Seven Kingdoms has burned itself out but in its bitter aftermath new conflict sparks life. The Martells of Dawn and the Starks of Winterfell seek vengeance for their dead. Euron's crow's eye, as black as a pirate ever raised as sail, returns from the smoking ruins of Valyria to claim the Iron Isles. From the icy north where others threaten the wall, apprentice master Samuel Tarly brings a mysterious babe in arms to the citadel. As plots, intrigues and battle threatens to engulf Westeros, victory will go to the men and women possessed of the coldest steel and the coldest hearts. So yes, like I said, I've never, never, ever watched the series, but I am enjoying the books. And... The last book I bought myself in December is the uh, modern classic, Penguin Modern Classics edition of Richard Llewellyn's How Green Was My Valley, <clears throat> which says, uh, growing up in a mining community in rural South Wales, Hugh Morgan is taught many harsh lessons at the kitchen table, at chapel and around the pit head. Looking back on the hardships of his early life where difficult days are faced with courage, but the valley swell with the beautiful sound of Welsh voices, it becomes clear that there is nowhere so green as the landscapes of his own memory. An immediate bestseller on publication in 1939, How Green Was My Valley quickly became one of the best loved novels in the 20th century. Poetic and nostalgic, it is an elegy to a lost world. So yeah, I'm looking forward to reading that. I actually, although I wasn't born in the Welsh Valleys, um, I did grow up in the South Wales uh, Valley is in a former mining village um, and this is the height of the miners strike in the early 80s um, so I'm very interested to read about this landscape because growing up in a small village and small school we learned a lot about the mining industry and the history of the mining industry, a big pit Bonavon, the mining museum is not very far away uh, and I can remember we went there when we were kids and I, I, I just find it also very fascinating maybe because I grew there but grew up there but maybe I would find it fascinating anyway but so I'm really looking forward to getting into this one and I do love these penguin modern editions they're so floppy and, and lovely so I can't wait to get into this one so now on to the books that I got given for Christmas, yay! And I got given six, I believe, I, something like that anyway, six. I got three from my partner's mother, and she bought me um, The Winter People by Jennifer McMahon. I don't know how you pronounce that. Um, so yeah, I mean, this is a mass market paperback, but it's nice, it's not too big. So I'm looking forward to this one. 
So some secrets never die. West Hall, Vermont has always been a town of strange disappearances and old legends. The most mysterious is that of Sarah Harrison Shear, who in 1908 was found dead in a field behind a house just months after the tragic death of her daughter. Now in the present day, 19 year old Ruthie lives in Sarah's farmhouse with her mother Alice and her younger sister Fawn. Alice has always insisted that they live off the grid, a decision that has weighty consequences when Ruthie wakes up one morning to find that Alice has vanished. In her search for clues, she is startled to uncover a copy of Sarah Harrison Shear's diary hidden beneath the floorboards of her mother's bedroom. As Ruthie gets sucked into the historical mystery, she discovers that she's not the only person looking for someone they've lost, but she may be the only one who can stop history from repeating itself. I have been dying to read this since I saw it mentioned on Jen Campbell's channel, so I cannot wait to get into this one. And I might even start it today. Gotta drink my tea. Oh. Um, she also gave me Andrew Cartmore's Written in Dead Wax, which is book one of the Vinyl Detective series. I know there's another two books planned in this series, so I'm hoping if I enjoy this, I will get it. It's not a mass market paperback, but I don't mind that. It's got a great cover. I just like <coughs> the premise of it. So basically, he is a record collector, a connoisseur of vinyl, hunting out rare and elusive LPs. Some end up on his turntable, some are sold at a handsome profit, and all sound a hell of a lot better than any digital recording. His business card describes him as vinyl detective, and certain people take this more literally than others, like the mysterious woman who wants to pay him a large sum of money to find a priceless lost recording on behalf of a wealthy, shadowy and somewhat sinister client. Given that he's just about to run out of cat food, this gets our hero's full attention, and so begins a dangerous odyssey in search of the rarest jazz record of them all. So I just like the sound of it, and I'm dying to read this one as well. I, I discovered this one when it first came out, and I wanted to get it, but I never got round to it, so I put it on my Christmas list. Um, yeah, and there, there's another one scheduled for May 2017 and May 2018, so I'm hoping that they stick to schedule. If I really like it, I will be buying those. The next one was another book I discovered back when I first started watching and taking part in booktube. It was before the EU referendum uh, happened and we've um, the majority of the United Kingdom voted out of the EU. Um, I'm not going to go and get political on you but this is obviously a political book. It's a fiction story and it's called This Disunited Kingdom and it's by Leslie J Nichols. Great cover. And um, basically it's the early 2020s and the UK has successfully withdrawn from the European Union and immigration laws are tight. Scotland has become independent and the home nation is under the rule of a conservative UKIP coalition that has introduced a rad radical reforms which are robustly efficient in running the country. It seems that the UK has never been in a better position until suddenly two catastrophic bombings in central London shake the country to its very core. Investigators Farah Karim and Sean Lakin are on a mission to get to the bottom of the intent behind these two attacks. Are they simply a resurgence of the acts of terrorism that haven't touched the country in years? Or is there a new and deeper conspiracy, conspiracy emerging? Farah and Seen, Sean, Seen? What is with that? Farah and Sean find themselves entangled in a, dangle, in a dangerous guessing game where their personal lives come under fire and the, thousands of, of, and the lives of thousands lay tenuously in their hands. I can't read today. I can't speak either. But yes, I'm really looking forward to it. Like I said, this came out before Brexit happened. Um, and I'll be interested to see what happens with this because obviously we are heading in that direction. Um, Article, Article 50 will be triggered, I think it's around March time. So that we can withdraw. I'll be very interested to see what happens. The next book again is a book I've been dying to get my hands on for ages. <clears throat> it was given to me by my mum. And that's the bookshop book by Jen Campbell. So obviously I follow Jen Campbell's um, channel. I've read her two previous books, uh, Weird Things Customers Share, Say in Bookshops and More Weird Things Customers Say in Bookshops and I love them. And ba basically this is about bookshops around the world. 
Um, so the front flap says, every bookshop has a story. We're talking about bookshops in barns, disused factories, converted churches and underground car parks, bookshops on boats, on buses and in old rundown railway stations. From the oldest bookshop in the world to the smallest you can imagine, the bookshop book explores the history of books, talks to authors about their favourite places and looks at more than 300 weirdly wonderful bookshops across six continents. Sadly, we've yet to build a bookshop down the South Pole. This book is a love letter to all bookshops around the world. And I, I'm, I'm actually started reading this. I think I'm about halfway through, just over halfway through. Um, but it's a book I'm not going to sit and read down in one go. I'm going to dip into it every now and again. I'm really enjoying it, though. It's a really good book. I've been in a few of the bookshops mentioned. Not all of them, obviously, but definitely a few of them. Um, so, yeah, looking forward to, uh, hopefully, visiting more. It's still going to be a long video, but there's only two more books to go. <laughs> the next one is The Forgetting by Sharon Cameron. I asked for this because I wanted to read it since I heard about it. The cover is absolutely gorgeous, but not only is the cover gorgeous, so is when you take the dust jacket off. It is absolutely stunning. I really like this. Nice, nice lilac flaps and, and end pages and the colours. Just... Now, as you know, down. I'm pretty sure everybody knows what this is about. Nadia lives in the city of Canaan, where life is safe and structured, hemmed in by white stone walls and no memory of what came before. But every 12 years, the city descends into the bloody chaos of the forgetting, a day of no consequences and no remorse, when each person's memories of parents, children's love, life and self are lost and forgotten unless they have been written. In canon, your book is your truth and your identity, and Nadia knows exactly who hasn't written the truth, because Nadia is the only person in Canaan who has never forgotten. So, yeah, and then she then goes to find out the truth about the city and about all sorts of things, and I'm really looking forward to reading this one. It's, oh, it's just a gorgeous book. Look at that spine. And it just sounds really fascinating. It is a YA book, but who cares? I, I don't judge books by YA or middle grade or adult if there's a good book it's a good book and I, that sounds good and the last book was bought to me by my partner paul he has <coughs> picked me up he got me a copy of um tony robinson's no cut cunning plan this is an autobiography of the british actor tony robinson who is most famous for playing baldrick in blackadder so basically this is literally his autobiography so i'm really of course i love autobiographies but not only is it just his autobiography it's actually signed as well so it's signed by Tony Robinson which is really really cool so that was a, a real surprise I wasn't expecting that because you know I, I gotta be honest I knew he had an autobiography out but I wouldn't have thought of picking it up I probably would have picked it up in paperback later so I'm really really pleased to have that that's just a little thing that little bookmark thing that says it's a signed edition so yes really looking forward to that Tony Robinson is one of my favorite actors I must admit so looking forward to that so that uh, draws an end to every single book I got in December and that's all the books for 2016 the next haul will be sometime in 2017 there may be one in January I don't know because I've got my partner's birthday coming up and I've ordered him a load of books because he's asked for some and obviously I've I'm going on holiday in February so there may be a few books but I, I don't think there'll be many which is a shame because I just love buying but I can't stop buying them but yeah if you've like if you've read any of these books can you, can you leave me um some comments down below and let me know what you think of them and which ones you've read because I'd love to know your thoughts and obviously um like and uh, share and of course subscribe if you're not already subscribed and I will be back soon because I've got to do my December wrap up which is gonna be another long video because I read some like 18 or 19 books so I'll see you soon happy reading and happy new year bye